episode 252. Off the cliff! Aiden, no! Dora cried. What a night this was turning out to be. Aiden and Miss Garner stared each other down. The secretary's teeth gritted and stands firm. With their emotional guise now fully lifted, she looks especially dour, maybe even sad. I respected you, Aiden. I've dealt with a lot of people like you in my life, and yet I never expected. She trailed off for a moment. I saw what you did. How on earth did you kill them all? She had been waiting at the base of the mountain for news on Aiden and Dora's whereabouts. Worried, had finally chosen to go up and look for them herself. But it wasn't long before she came across the carnage Aiden had left in his wake, the bodies of Trevor and his crew. Even with everything she knew, she had still underestimated Aiden. That young teen, with his own two hands, had killed them all. She suddenly understood how much of a threat he really was. Aiden, meanwhile, could see that behind the fire in her eyes, Miss Garner's mind was spinning. It was as if she was slowly descending into madness. Miss Garner, put down the gun. Please, you know what I can do now. You are not my enemy. He held his palms out toward her, hoping to calm her. Even if you kill me, there's a whole battalion of police officers stationed at the foot of the mountain looking for me and Dora. Just surrender now and it will all be... Stop! Miss Garner screamed, shaking her head. Sirens sounded from the bottom of the mountain. Her eyes were wild and the hand wielding the gun was visibly shaking. Don't you understand? I can't surrender! This is all your fault! Our mission failed because of you, she moaned, looking pleadingly to the sky. I'll kill you! But as she said this, she realized was staring down the barrel of another pistol, similar to hers. As she was breaking down, Aiden had whipped out a weapon of his own, and he now held it pointed squarely and surely at her. She hesitated for only a second, but a second was all Aiden needed. The next thing she knew, Miss Garner was grasping her right hand, bleeding and in searing pain. The gun that had been situated in it was now a few feet away. Aiden was already aiming at the secretary again, this time at the heart. I mean it, Ava. I know that this isn't you. Tell us what's wrong. We can help you. Miss Garner was looking at Dora, her face full of pity and pain. Aiden could tell she didn't want to hurt Dora. She didn't want to do this at all. Miss Garner closed her eyes again, and she shook her head in pain. It's no use. You don't understand the horrors of Black Scorpion. Aiden's eyes widened. He didn't expect to hear that name from Miss Garner, of all people. The last time he had heard of Black Scorpion, it was from the mouth of Ross Doblar, speaking to the Wolf Brigade. Doblar's wife, Holly, had been kidnapped by Black Scorpion five years ago. Were the people after Dora now also from Black Scorpion? At the very least, this so-called human trafficking group must be affiliated with Black Scorpion. There was high probability, in fact, that it all was a front for Black Scorpion in itself. But why Dora? Aiden's mind raced. At this time, however, Miss Garner was moving toward the edge of the cliff. What are you doing? Aiden demanded, pistol still pointed at her chest. As her heels teetered on the edge of the cliff, Miss Garner once again looked sadly at Dora. She said again, this time barely above an audible whisper, Dora, I'm so sorry. And she threw herself off the side of the cliff. No! Aiden was shocked. He leaped toward the cliff edge to grab her before she could fall, but he didn't make it in time. He could only watch as she fell farther and farther until she looked to be nothing more than a tiny black dot. Soon, the black dot disappeared in the rolling river beneath them. At noon that day, Aiden was sitting in an empty interrogation room at the Bayside police station with a cup of hot coffee steaming in front of him. Much to his dismay, the weapons and equipment he had picked up in the field had been confiscated by Officer Robert. In his words, they were evidence in an active investigation and had to stay at the station. What's more, Robert and his fellow officers had been questioning him for hours on end. Although the officers were cordial, just the fact that he was in a police station to begin with left Aiden feeling unsettled. And now the door opened once again. Director Harris strode in, his face uber serious. 
he was followed close behind by a handful of similarly serious looking agents with FBI jackets. Well, 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 Mr. Dale, you've caused quite a mess this time, haven't you? He said. He leaned forward across from Aiden, his palms flat on the interrogation table. He let a small smile creep along his face. I guess it's time to get you out of here. Aiden tried not to look outwardly surprised by Harris's sudden change of tone. That mess you left up there on that mountain? The investigating officers found evidence on their bodies that proved their ties to the Black Scorpion. The spy from Regan that we found had similar items on his person, which means that he was Black Scorpion too. They really are targeting Chesterton, for whatever reason. So I came all the way here from Springfield. As Director Harris went on, Aiden looked down at the table silently, waiting for a moment to speak. Finally, he asked quietly, Any word on Miss Garner? Our people are still searching the river, but there's no trace of her. Aiden sighed, worried, conflicted. They couldn't even find a body? It was a sight to see, a real rogues gallery all gathered in the hot, dry second floor lobby of the Midnight Snack Corner. Harris, FBI National Security Director, experienced officer and detective, former Wolf Brigade member, leaning casually against one wall, his hand resting on the phone hooked to his belt as if it could ring at any moment. Next to him was Officer Robert, the local chief of police and a Bayside District folk hero. Crime went sharply down when he was known to be in the field. Criminals knew they wouldn't have a chance. Anthony K, president of K Group, among the most influential businessmen in the world. He was sitting at a table by himself, face hidden in his hand. In the corner, Ross Doblar, former Wolf Brigade captain, leaned against the wall watching the others like a plotting animal, like he was choosing which of them he intended to devour first. And, unpredictably, the focus of all their attention was Midnight Snack Corner shop manager Aiden Dale. As unlikely a concept as it might seem from an outsider's point of view, all the powerful men in the room knew that only one person there could produce a major earthquake with the single stomp of his foot, and it wasn't any of them. Aiden's mother had no clue how close her son had come to death just hours before. She brought in a few cups of coffee and asked Aiden to pass them to their guests. As he brought Kay his cup, Aiden took the opportunity to ask after his daughter. Mr. Kay, how is Dora holding up? Physically fine, but emotionally she's exhausted. She's asleep now. Kay bowed his head solemnly and looked Aiden in the eye. Aiden, you saved Dora again. This time, if it wasn't for you, I can't even think of what might have befallen her. I still just don't understand, Aiden confined in him. Miss Garner saved my life once before. I trusted her. Why would she try to kill Dora? She messed with my villa's defense and security mechanisms. She tried to block off the routes of the teams on the mountain, but she didn't hurt anyone or steal anything. She must really have only been after Dora, Kay mused. It's so strange. Why Dora? Aiden didn't know either, and it was not knowing that was killing him. His eyes flashed. Sounds like we need to get to the bottom of this whole Black Scorpion business then.